Quick reintroduction of my guest tonight on my far right is Jonathan Mwake, he's former Deputy Governor of Nairobi County. We also have with us David Murade, he's Vice Chair of the Jubilee Party, and Oyeyo Onchari, he is the political advisor to Nairobi Governor Mike Mbuvisonko. Vice Chair, let me come to you. You say you want to see the Governor of Nairobi County impeached. What is the straw that broke the camel's back? Was it his appointment or nomination of Miguna as his preferred deputy? Because one day we just hear Sonko is failing, he has to go nine months into his term. What is that one thing you'd say you want him impeached? Because he's received support from his, the county assembly saying they do not want him impeached. We said he's a candidate for impeachment. Okay. We did not say we are impeaching him. There has to be a standard. Nairobi is too important to be left to gangsters in gangsterland. And we are seeing traits of hooliganism. For example, you saw what happened at the boulevard with some of these people who are now already uh, in uh, court, mm -hmm. purportedly supporting the governor. I mean, Sophie, in America, Washington, is uh, the seat of the federal government. It is under the national government. In uh, other places like uh, Nigeria also, the capital city is too important. Nairobi is too important. But when did this dawn on you? You gave him the, ca the ticket for Jubilee to vie for governorship, so a campaign for him with the president. We are democratic. We are democratic and we went through a nomination process and he won. Mm -hmm. I myself was not convinced, but I had to vote for him. I voted for Sonko because he was a party candidate against my conscience, against my conviction that this city needed some uh, sobriety and seriousness. In fact, me, the Mweke Kidero tenure, even though they were in ODM, they were in the opposition, mm -hmm. there was sobriety. I don't know about uh, how efficient they were in uh, managing it, but we were hoping to do better than uh, the Kidero administration. If you ask the people of Nairobi, Today, I think if you compare apples and apples, there's no feel good factor. There's no feel good feeling about the Sonko administration. So what now? You say he's candidate for impeachment. What do you do from here to see what you desire come to fruition? They have to up their game. For, and I'm telling you, we are not going to go down there and uh, start uh, going down the gutter with them. If they want to sink that law, there is a party and there is a code of conduct. And there's a dis disciplinary measures uh, that can be taken. For example, he needs to appoint a deputy governor. He cannot run this city He's nominated without a de Look, this guy is a lawyer, and I'm asking him how they advise uh, their governor. Number one, Sophie, there's no way, and the constitution is very clear. If you are not a citizen of this republic, you cannot be appointed to be a deputy governor. There are some seats you cannot Appoints to. It's just mischief. Okay, we'll hear Number from, two, yes. this guy, the last time we checked, is on an all fly list. Number three, the government bent over twice mm -hmm. to give him papers, mm -hmm. my friend, mm -hmm. to naturalize and regularize his citizenship. All right? He told them. The Canadian embassy went to reassure him. He, he brushed them off. The former Prime Minister, Ryla, went there. And when you listened to the explanation by government, that is a procedure for every dual citizen wanting to become a Kenyan citizen. But you know the courts have ruled against what the government position is. There's orders against the position the government has taken. I think that's uh, open to interpretation. What the court was asking the government to do, and the government did, was to allow him to come back. He came back with a Canadian passport. He would have been allowed through with a Canadian passport, okay. get a visa like uh, any other tourist, mm -hmm. while in Kenya, regularize his status as a Kenyan citizen through the processes. Although the first limb of that order was that the government furnish him with documentation to return his Kenyan documentation. But we'll continue that conversation. Mwake, let me come to you. You have the Nairobi Regeneration Committee. It is chaired by the governor and Naju Balala. Several CSs are there. The President, Chief of Staff, is part of that team. You heard the deadline they gave of 30 days, no garbage, clean Nairobi River. Do you see this work and cooperation between the national government and the county government as interference by the national government, 
or is this the kind of partnership we should be seeing in all the counties? Because some people have expressed concern that this is an indictment on his leadership that other people have been brought to run the county. Uh, Sophie, you heard the vice chair, uh, Mr. Murather, here say that um, the national government and the county government are supposed to be working together. Uh, it's not just supposed to be working together, it's actually law. Mm -hmm. You heard Mr. Murather say Nairobi is too important. Uh, and those are not just words from his mouth. I'd like to support him because that's words from the framers of our constitution who actually created a law in the Urban Cities and Areas Act that mandates the national government to sign an agreement with the capital city, get into a memorandum of understanding and work together to deliver services in the capital city. The form of this cooperation, does it worry you? It doesn't because even us, we were in the opposition. But we sat down and signed agreements with President Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. who was not on our side. And you saw many times, even Governor Kidero got blasted by uh, people from our political divide being told we are working with the government. But because of our sobriety, we were following the law. It's actually law. And one big problem we have, and I say this any time I'm given a chance to talk to Kenyans, is once we lose the rule of law, then we've lost everything, yeah? We just need to follow the law so that there can be some order. There's a law that says Nairobi and the national government must work together because Nairobi is the seat of government. It's the seat of the diplomatic community. It's the seat of the judiciary. It's the seat of both houses of, pres of, uh, of parliament. It is too important to be left to the governor by himself. And that's why parliament made that law to say there must be an agreement. Now this Nairobi Regeneration Committee is an execution of that agreement. So by you saying they're being imposed on Governor Sonko, again, to me, it's just excuses. And you can't make excuses forever. At some point, the excuses must stop and the work must begin. All right, on Chari, 100 days promised, those not kept. And now what we're hearing is the governor had too many other things to do to campaign for the president. He's matter in court. So he's, even he said he's technically been in office for 29 days. The regeneration team, 30 days, we're going to do this again. They said they'd quit. We have not seen anyone resigning. They have not met their promises. So what are you telling Nairobians tonight? What advice do you give this governor in, as far as the priority areas in his term as governor? No, um... I think, apart from, of course, the usual politicking, Nairobians can see the governor is committed to service delivery. Uh, we had floods, they're still ongoing, and like during the Kidero Mweke, you know, time, the responses to issues were, were, were a bit, you know, quick. We didn't lose as many lives as the floods did, I mean, caused during the Kidero Mweke regime. And, um, but it's still the, causing havoc. I don't think we can compare whether lives yeah, were lost process, or not. The I, havoc that's been caused by the floods is still yeah, devastating. The process of position in Nairobi to a point where it's not, uh, you know, vulnerable to floods. It's going to take time. The sewerage system, the drainage system, is, it's very old, very, very old. The governor is set and is working. And the governor does not oppose um, a working relationship with the national government. The president knows it, and the president's people know it. Actually, the president came out the other day and said, those people who think Nairobi is going to be dissolved as a county should wake up. Mm -hmm. Nairobi as a, as a county is not going anywhere. And the president understands the governor is willing to, to work with the national government. That is why the governor accepted to co-chair the committee with Balala. Now, what needs to be done is very simple. The guys in the national government, who I think could be very close to the president, should give the governor support. That is it. They, they fail to understand one thing. When the governor talks about the big four, he's talking about, you know, Nairobi is about 60% of the GDP of the country. Mm -hmm. So if Nairobi fails, the big four has failed. That is it. Mm -hmm. So that is why instead of fighting Sonko, instead of condemning him, instead of, you know, this unnecessary politicking, they actually need to support him. But are Nairobians being taken for fools. This promise has been made to them, we'll do this in 100 days, we'll do this in 30 days, and then nothing. In a climate All of we keep hearing are excuses Sophia, after that. So in a how climate, long? In a climate of politicking, you cannot deliver. That is it. If the government is given ample but time... But a politician is politics. It's part of it. You cannot divorce politics from everyday running of... It's part of it. Now, there's a point where you stop politicking and you start working. 
That is it. So we cannot, we have actually have to accept Sonko was elected governor by the people of Nairobi. And Gilgadha was supposed to be the worker and he said with politics, but look at how that went. Gilgadha quit on his own, he decided to do it. Because he could not untrust as he said at the time. Well, whatever the reason, you know, he gave us, he quit. That is it. He decided to become a quitter. So the point is, the governor should be given time, he should be supported. At the end of the day, you know, we, we all make mistakes. At some If he trips at some point, instead of trying to crucify him, we bring him close, we work with him. That is going to be for the betterment of not just so the county government. That you have made mistakes. Because if you look at even like this uh, Meguna saga, he said it's in the spirit of handshake. Mm -hmm. You know Meguna does not support the handshake. He has even gone on record to criticize the former prime minister for the handshake. Why do you, who do you take us for, you people? Because we have to agree that the people who are not for the handshake have a different agenda from ours. The people who do not appreciate the calm, the peace, the stability, which is the enabling environment for the governor and all these other people to do work for the people, not just of Nairobi, of the whole republic, are the same people you are telling us, a rebel leader of a NRM who is <laughs> actually supposed to come and become uh, the deputy governor. Sometimes you're taking this joke a bit too far, eh? I don't and it's think a sick so. joke. Because I'm sure what Sonko is trying to do is to delay and prolong for the longest time the appointment of a deputy. I don't think so. If that By is the, the case, isn't he doing that because he wants to protect his seat because he knows there are people like you coming after him? To impeach him, you've put it on we records. We have never interfered with the management of the city, county, government. Mm -hmm. If anything, the party has supported, government has supported, and I'm saying they're very lucky. Because, for example, if you created the Namata, you have a budget line in the financial estimates dedicated to doing those things you're talking about. The roads, the environment. Over and above what they are collecting. And Nairobi is one county which can has the potential of collecting a lot of money. It can actually run even without the money they get for the devo uh, devolved units. Mm -hmm. But what are we having to show for it? Why well, are you not blaming the Kidero Mweke you know, administration when they were not collecting any money? Now we're collecting 1.6 billion and so we're still getting with it. You know, Sophie, the question Sophie, goes let back me, to what is the let money doing? Yeah, what yeah, are yeah. doing with let, it? Let me, just, let me just demystify this thing because yeah. I've been the deputy governor of Nairobi mm -hmm. for four years and eight months and I understand the finance of that county. You've gone on record and the governor has gone on record several times saying he's collecting 100 million shillings a day. That's 500 million shillings a week. That's 2 billion shillings a month. Salaries is 1 billion. To run the county is 300 million. Running the county means operations, paying power, putting fuel in vehicles, maintenance of county facilities is 300 million shillings a month. The government is giving you now 16 billion. We used to get nine. Mm -hmm. 16 billion. If you divide that by 12, you get 1.3 billion. So that 1.3 billion the government is giving you, you can pay salaries and run the county. The 2 billion shillings you are making every month is supposed to do what? Garbage. Garbage collectors are paid 52 million shillings a month. If you're collecting 100 million shillings a day and you can't pick garbage, my friend, there's a problem. And contracts have been terminated. And something I think my I have to clarify before goes ahead. Problem. The governor didn't say collect 100 million shillings but every he said single day. Just, just we play the clip. Not every single day. But Sometimes it gets it, down to around 70 day. million. Okay. Actually, when we hit 100 million shillings, it was in the news for that particular day. But the governor even, just play the but clip. Still, see, see, bottom, bottom line, every bottom day. line, gentlemen, Working. bottom line is what with the money being the collected, money? Yes, what the matter. Nairobian at home yeah. watching is asking is what is that being used to do? Yeah. But to the question about Miguna Miguna, mm -hmm. is this a decision you all advised, knowing all the issues around his choice for deputy governor? Number one. The Kenyan constitution does not bar the governor from picking someone who does not belong to the, ruling, uh, to the party of the governor. Mm -hmm. That is clear. Uh, number two, the Miguna Miguna was cleared to run for governor in the 2017 gubernatorial election Then issues in were discovered after the fact? Uh, 
right? Mm. That he was. Uh, when immigration took issue with him, it was after this <laughs> so, clearing to who, run. Who fared? Is it Miguna Miguna or the ABC? I or think what we are asking now, Wakili, but is you can now that we know. Yeah. Yes. Now that we know that a state officer cannot be a dual citizen, and all of Nairobi, and I'm sure Governor Sonko knows that a dual citizen cannot be a deputy governor or a state officer. Deputy governor is a state officer. Yeah. Why would he appoint somebody very well knowing that that person cannot be vetted by the county assembly and, and become the deputy governor? And also the seriousness of it to question so what, that. There must be something behind the something. Miguna was never consulted. How yeah. do you nominate someone without telling you heads up, hey, I think you will yeah. do this. They find out on social media. So what's the story media. with Miguna? Briefly, uh, yes. Now, let me say this. Huh? The governor uh, made it very clear. He said uh, the president can go ahead and uh, forgive Miguna and have all the other issues sorted and then he can become what? Um, the deputy governor. That is it. And I think for the governor uh, to show, to walk in the footsteps of the president, he has actually to reach out to someone from the outside. That is what it means to create uh, a unified government. Now, so does he break the law? Uh, no, no, he does not. Where? How does he break the Dual law? Dual citizenship. Article 78 there of the Constitution of Kenya. can become a single uh, a Kenyan citizen. He has already can, on can his renounce. social media let me finish. said he can, he's not uh, let interested me working. He's even called them cartels and all that. That's there's a difference between the tantrums. Of... There's a difference between tantrums people throw on social media, like Murada said, and actual stuff people want to do. There's a big difference. And there's a process through which Miguna can, uh, you know, uh, relinquish the Ghanaian citizenship, become a Kenyan citizen, and become a deputy governor. But that's it's nominee not... is saying this is a distraction, he's not interested, he's calling this administration a that cartel. That is because he wants to see whether it's going to run its time and become a serious thing. Now, okay. when it's being dismissed all over, it becomes vindicated. All we have to do is to look at Miguna as a Kenyan citizen. Of course, we know his problems have been political, and we don't have to behave like we don't know. Miguna is a Kenyan citizen, he was born in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But because of what he did, you know, he participated in swearing in the former prime minister, it became a political issue. Now, because of the handshake, we expect all political problems of people like Miguna Miguna to, to be behind us. All right. We had uh, Raila, the yeah. former prime minister, yesterday in London. And he was saying Miguna is his own worst enemy. Because everybody tried to hammer some sense in him. Remember, he used to work for the former prime minister as a, an advisor. So if there's anybody who knows this guy, it's him. Okay. And we think this thing was being done to spite the former prime minister. I'll ask you this, Vice Chair. We only have two minutes to go very briefly. Nairobi County has numerous challenges, as we enumerated some of them earlier. But one of them is the workforce. There's quite a bloated workforce. A lot of the budget going to paying salaries, which you lord uh, his leadership for. But some of that is from the former administration, uh, as it was before the devolution of uh, devolution, uh, as, as it came to being. And so, is there a question about rethinking Nairobi out of place, in your view, seeing as it's so critical to the country, 60% of GDP is Nairobi? One of the things uh, our brother here has said is that the Kidero administration used to collect 100 million. They are saying they are collecting. They were collecting around 200 million a month. We and you guys are collecting at least one, one billion a month. You are collecting a but, billion. But for so the record, because can that's the Nairobians. Just, no, no, no. It's just right for the record. It's okay. <laughs> can the Nairobians see the difference in terms of the money you are now collecting, the services, what she's asking, the workforce, all right? Yes. You are busy beating up hawkers and border borders and no, the same people you have been even demolishing around Ngara where the same people who supported Sonko, he has now turned around instead of creating and that is why the president was asking why are you having these cartels the, the talk and yet you can involve the youth and get the youth to clean up the city with that kind of money you give us a street you give us a jogoro you give us uh, the estate. The young people, they, they are jobless. So do you think we should take Nairobi County back to the national government? Dissolve I think there was such a move, and that's why... Do you right? support it? Oh, yes, I do. And in fact, this calls for uh, a review of the uh, constitution. Although the party leader has said we do not want to be distracted, some of us actually think it's a high time that we relooked this uh, Katiba so that places like Nairobi can be removed from what you call county governance. I know he said Nairobi is going nowhere, 
but the president also is very concerned about uh, what is uh, happening in Nairobi. So as we look at the, the architecture mm -hmm. of power relations in this country, one of the things that should stay in the uh, national government, national government is should Nairobi. be the capital city. Okay, briefly, what do you think the priority for Governor Sonko should be in light of all the promises that have been broken so far going forward the next four and a half years or so? What should he focus on? I think uh, infrastructure development and service delivery and bringing back order into the city. Uh, I'll tell you what. We did a strategic plan, 2015 to 2025, a 10-year strategic plan. In that plan, it is one of the documents that was handed over to Governor Sonko by outgoing Governor Kidero during the swearing-in. You saw him being handed over a bunch of documents. That document has everything that needs to be done to regenerate Nairobi. So my advice to Governor Sonko is don't reinvent the wheel. Why we were not able to implement that document okay. in full is because of funding issues. Now with the goodwill of the national government and the national government and county government being under the same party, yeah. Sonko has all the funds to his disposal. He should just cut the sideshows. He should take that strategic document, okay. go through it with his team, mm -hmm. and implement it. And Nairobians will stop being angry. Yes. I, I plead for mercy from my director with one minute to please ask you this very important question that I've seen quite a number of people tweet about. Um, P.S. Kibisho uh, is one that Governor Sonko has said has threatened his life and has mentioned you and him to be his distractors. Why is not this been settled internally, Jubilee? Why let it fester in public? What beef does Kibisho have with the governor? I'm not aware that uh, P.S. Kivicho has uh, threatened Sonko. He's just throwing tantrums. And why would anybody be interested in uh, taking him out? Absolutely no reason. There are ways mm -hmm. of uh, dealing with the problem. And uh, I told you, Sonko is my friend. He comes to my house. So why Do don't you deal with all this mess internally? Because mm -hmm. you can call them, summon them, sit around a table, agree things. And then the next day they are running wild, they run riots, you know. All right. You, you, you can't manage some of these people. All right, we must end it there. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I wish we had more time, but uh, we are out of time. Uh, Oyeyo Onchari, political advisor to Governor Mike Sonko, thank you for being with You're us welcome. tonight. David Murada, vice chair of the Jubilee Party, and Jonathan Mwake, former deputy governor, Nairobi County. It was a pleasure to hear uh, mm. from you all tonight, and thank you for your feedback. Keep